why I want to be a minister. So, um, I've been in church like my whole entire life, guys. I don't know any other existence outside of church. Even, I mean, from a little girl. So, from BTU on Tuesdays to Bible study on Wednesdays to Thursday choir rehearsals to Friday prayer meetings, Saturday morning, passing out the little pamphlets, Saturday afternoon, children's church, back at Sunday. That was literally my life. And then as I got older, I moved from attending BTU to teaching it, from attending choir rehearsal to being the senior praise and worship leader, and so on and so on. So it only morphed into more church. And so three and a half decades, I've been in this lifestyle. I've been in this life. I've been in this environment. I've been in this community. And I was spiritually bankrupt, guys. Three and a half decades in. And here's why. In our services, people would come for help. People come to church for help. They come to church for guidance on how to live their life. And when people come and they don't get said guidance, there's a part of the service where people come for prayer. And I distinctly remember people coming up every week for the same thing, like the same issue. And my soul was beginning to stand up like this is a problem. People are coming for help. They're coming for life-changing experience. They're getting an emotional high, but they're, they don't have the power to change their life. They're still handing over their power. And so I remember it like it was yesterday, guys. I'm sitting in church. This was, now, mind you, thousands of people in church. I was singing to 10,000 people on any given Sunday, three services. I mean, I was in, in. It's, you know, a huge church, thousands of people. And the preacher gets up. And he's getting ready to start. And then he calls for that damn altar call. And I don't know what it was about that day. But that day my soul was like, we out. So the people are walking up. They playing the same little somber music. And as the people were getting up, I, it's almost as if my body just levitated off the... I'm like, what the hell is going on? By the time I knew it, y'all, I had threw my jacket on, my purse on my arm. Walked down the choir steps down the steps to get on the floor walk all the way with my church finger up to the back of the church by the time i got to the back of the church my entire body was hot i slammed the door and then held on to the knob there i am didn't know that it was raining so it's cold and raining my hair is falling it's wet my makeup is running and in that moment two things were happening i was being cleansed and i was being drenched and I knew that once I took my hand off of that door, I was saying bye-bye to three and a half decades of suggestive teaching. I was saying bye-bye to three and a half decades of handing my power over. I was saying bye-bye to three and a half decades of doing life that resulted in no change for the people that I cared about. I knew my life would change, but the pursuit of how to impact the lives of the people that I was leading was more important than hanging on to that door. So I let go of that door in pursuit of what I'm titling this talk, the missing ingredient. I needed to know how to give people power to change their life. And since it was obviously I didn't have it, I had to let go of everything that I knew, decades of everything I knew, and move into the search and the pursuit of the missing ingredient. Can I tell you what it is? It's consciousness, it's truth, and it's you, dear. It's coming back to the I am. It's coming back to the spiritual being that we are, coming out of this humanism and this, this, this very physical world and coming back to our spiritual nature. I was spiritually bankrupt and spiritually disconnected because I was not operating from the I am. And that is a missing ingredient. That's the whole talk. Three points I want to share with you. How the missing ingredient has literally changed my life. How it took me from powerlessness. How it helped me with my subconscious reprogramming. And then how it helped me do my purpose. So we're going to talk about powerlessness, programming, and purpose. Really, really quick. So let's jump right into powerlessness. From the time that I can remember, any Christian, any Protestant will say this to you. Born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I knew what it meant in church, but I didn't know what the rest of the world thought. So on my pursuit, the first things I did was Google. Okay, what is sin? What is iniquity? Sin is evil, perceived evil, and then iniquity is immoral. Let that sink in. So for three and a half decades, I'm walking around believing 
commands in my head telling me that I'm evil and immoral. And because I'm evil and immoral, I'm separated from God and that God is somewhere out there and that I'm so disgusting to him that he would now have to send his son to get me back in right relationship with him. Oh, and that the only way God can see me is through Jesus. Three and a half decades, I believed that story of separation until I met the creative process, until I came into the knowing of the creative process. And it's one of the, it's the core teaching, it's the core, what I believe is the core teaching of New Thought, and especially of being a practitioner. And so what the creative process is, I'm so glad you asked. The creative process is um, a three-step process. I don't have time to teach it in, in, in depth, but maybe, you know, hang around with me, and in, in future lessons you'll hear about it. But it is the way we create. Let me give you the definition of it. It is thought, the universal law, into form. That's the definition of it. Now, let me explain it. The first form is thought or consciousness, God, source, energy, spirit. The second part is the universal law, the creative medium, the soul, if you will, masculine, feminine, if you will. It's the womb. It's where the growth takes place. It's where everything happens. And it only says yes. Okay. And then the form is life or the baby, if you will. Today, we're going to make a stew. We're going to make a yummy stew. And so I'm going to teach you how to go from the ingredients, the thoughts that you put into your stew, because the pot only says yes. The pot has one job, and that is to cook whatever is put in it. Universal law only says yes to what is put in it. Whatever energy, whatever is impressed upon universal law, it says yes to, and thus, the stew. So you can either have a stew of trauma, powerlessness, programming, all of that stuff, sin, immorality, or you can have a stew of love, pure potential, perfect health, all of the things that we have, not that we have to ascribe to, but when you come back to the I am and the knowing, you remember, I have all this shit. I don't have to go get it. All I have to do is be with the knowing. And so the creative process helps us to get back with the knowing. And once we know, then we can create a bomb-ass stew. And we can create as many stews as we want, whenever we want to create a stew. That, my dear, is the missing ingredient. So I went from the powerlessness of being evil, immoral, God is separated, don't want to have nothing to do with me, to no, I am divine, I am complete, I am whole, because I am an emanation of God. I come from the same source, energy. It's only one energy source, and I was created from that. So I move as God. I teach as God, in God, through God. So that is the beautiful part of it. And so I went from powerlessness to taking my power back, my divinity. I am, and because I am, it I get to create my own stew. Second point, let's go into programming. Remember, we talked about the ingredients that you put in. Thoughts are based on our belief system. And our belief system is based on our identity. Again, stay with me and we will go through all of these things. So my identity was anything other than the I am. So because my identity was not in the I am, my stew was all of the effects of not being with the knowing. So change my identity to the I am now I can change my belief system what is the belief system Stephanie the belief system is all of the things that happen in the subconscious It is the backing of the subconscious thinking it is the belief system faith cometh by hearing remember I told you suggested for three and a half decades faith cometh by hearing faith is a way of being it is belief that is what faith is cometh by hearing what are you hearing what is a command it's going in and it's playing over and over and over again because remember the universal law only says yes and so if you if your little soldiers are commanding remember it's only going in the pot so if you're putting doubt fear all these emotions into the pot then you're gonna have you're gonna be scared every time that's the life you experience and so the programming is so important because when you can get your, when you change your identity, then you get your belief system. Your belief system then creates the thoughts. Belief and thought is the command. 
You change the commands. If you change the commands of the little soldiers, now you are using universal law and you are allowing it to work the way that it was designed to work and produce the stew with right thinking, as Ernest Holmes would say, right thinking, God thinking. Okay, so that is how the creative process, how universal law, how it changed my commands. Another thing was affirmative prayer. Affirmative prayer is an amazing tool in changing the command. Because how do you change a command? You, it's repetition. It's repetition. Daily spiritual practice. So affirmative prayer and daily spiritual practice is how I change the commands. Don't have time to go into it, but stick around. I'll teach you all about it. So now we've learned about the creative process, how I went from separation, giving over my power to owning my divinity in the identity of the I am. And then now I, I have changed the commands that are automating what's going into my pot. It's auto, I'm changing those commands. And so now my commands go from all of this negative energy to very positive perfect health all of the you know the things that we have as spiritual beings that are granted to us as spiritual beings now coming into the pot and so my stew went from drama and a you know lack and all kinds of stuff to abundance to healing to health to all of these beautiful things and brings me to my last p which is my purpose my purpose is this it's to teach this to you, to share this with you with so much love and joy because I found the missing ingredient. And I can teach you, I can show you how to get back to the I am. Truth is what heals. You don't need me to touch you or anything like that. All you got to do is know truth and truth will heal you. That is the power that I wish I could go back and give those people at the altar. That is the power that I went in search of when I took my hand off of that doorknob. And that is the power that I am giving to you in this talk. What will you choose? Will you choose to create a stew? Because remember, you're still creating. What ingredients are you putting in your stew? I invite you. I invite you to get back to the I am so that you create a stew based on pure potential, based on the amazing, beautiful, spiritual being that you already are. So thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you for listening. And as a minister, whatever I can do to help you on your journey back to the I am, sign me up. You guys have a great day.